Hello and welcome back to my crazy electronics project videos for my Megawang 2000 Turbo Edition hardware. You're seeing the new PCB delivered from PCBWay's factory and very well assembled by PCBWay. I've been inspecting this and it's a very neat job. This is the old sprites board. It uses a lot more tightly packed uh, through hole components. There's also some resistors there for kind of like a pull up. But this board is all digital electronics now. There, there's no resistors being used for kind of like uh, variable pull ups and stuff like that. It all uses digital pull ups and digital logic. So this is the super scale sprites board in situ in the board stack. That large board behind is actually the audio board. And I'm hoping that the Afterburner demo, which I'm hoping will that will run on this Commodore 64, will play some audio along with demonstrating the super scaled sprites functionality. So I've just got my source code here for the emulation. So this is emulation. This is what we should see running on the real Commodore 64. So we have the scaled sprites hardware on the right in the display on the right and the display on the left is actually the standard video output from the Commodore 64. So the Commodore 64 displays two screens. It displays its standard VIC chip video output, but it also displays a lot of video output using the Megawang 2000 Turbo Edition hardware. So I'm running the code on the Commodore 64 and there we go. Look, there's a test of the scaled sprites hardware. I've got kind of like a, a hardware test screen right at the beginning. And then the Commodore 64 is waiting to send a whole bunch of data from the two megabytes of external RAM using my user port extension hardware, which is also plugged into the board stack. So I'm going to use my Python script here just to send the information from my PC's hard drive to the COM port, which is plugged in to an FTDI USB interface, which then interfaces with the two megabytes of static RAM on the user port extension. So the Commodore 64 is waiting for the data to be sent. So there we go. The Python script is just sending the data. It's sending around about two megabytes of data, so it takes a couple of seconds. Now, the Commodore 64 uses the fat. Wow, that worked first time. Oh, this is great, fantastic. So, uh, PCBWay have managed to deliver a perfectly working board first time. Obviously, I'm really extremely pleased that even this just works. So, the Commodore 64 is sending all of these sprite positions. Wow, look at that. So the Commodore 64 is now sending this to the Megawang 2000 Turbo Edition hardware. Let's see if I can bank around. Yes, that works too. Uh, so the background banking for the graduated sky and the uh, clouds and everything is actually done by the Mode 7 layer. Uh, the sprites which are whooshing towards the player are displayed by the super scale sprites. Let's see if we can get some audio going in the background as well. I've just turned up the audio so you can hear it hopefully on the video. But the audio is a four channel, eight bit sampled audio as well. And those samples, of course, come from the arcade game. But yeah, look, fantastic. Wow, the frame rate's great as well. So when I was running this in emulation, I tried to make the uh, emulation of this hardware that's written in Java um, match the performance of the Commodore 64, but it's always great to see this working on real Commodore 64 hardware. So it's using the standard uh, 6510 processor, the old 8-bit processor running at one megahertz. And you can see here, look, a Commodore 64 admittedly with a whole bunch of extra hardware, the enemy. especially for the super scale sprites and especially for the audio and everything else. And especially having the two megabytes the of enemy. RAM as well allows me to accelerate 3D operations, especially rotations and perspective calculations. The enemy. Because the Commodore 64 can access the whole 
two megabytes of static RAM and use it as a great big lookup table. But yeah, um, this is the Proteus design tool which I used to design and test the hardware simulation. Uh, not the emulation, but it's a hardware simulation down at the logic gate level. You can see all of those logic gates being used there. But yeah, fantastic, right? Uh, I'm really amazed that this actually uh, works first time. Uh, I think it's a testament to how powerful the Proteus software is, but also how accurately and diligently PCBWay have assembled my design. So I just use the design tool, Proteus design tool, to package up the uh, Gerber files the and all of the placement information and everything. Uh, PCBWay just take all of that information, including the bomb the material enemy. list, the basically, enemy. the component list, and they just assemble it all up and then send it back and it just works. That's the external RAM board, there's the super scaled sprite board in situ with the sound board behind. The APU board is in front which is the advanced processing unit board and all of these all of these boards were designed in the Proteus tool as well. So the emulation speed and the real hardware speed on the Commodore 64 are pretty much the same. I'm really very pleased with that estimation that I managed to add to the emulation. But yeah, fantastic, right? So my uh, goal for this is to, once I do, I think, one more hardware revision, just to optimize a few things, uh, is to make these boards available for sale. And of course, uh, you can probably, in the end, just order them directly from uh, PCBWay, all fully assembled, and then just get them to do it to you. They're not cheap. Uh, they use 74LS series logic, uh, surface mount devices now, I think uh, the through hole component versions of the 74LS devices are very hard to find or getting very hard to find and they're actually, they cost a little bit more and they weigh a lot more as well. Uh, the surface mount boards are smaller, lighter and a little bit cheaper. So I think the idea is is to basically offer these boards up for sale so you can buy them yourselves. They will interface with other similar 8-bit retro systems that use 5 volts. Uh, they will interface quite easily because all I'm doing is that I'm plugging this board stack into the user port on the Commodore 64 and the Commodore 64 then just sends and receives commands to the graphics hardware and also the extension and external stuff. So yes, I'm very, very pleased. Thank you very much, PCB Wave. Thank you very much, Proteus Design Tool, Lab Center Electronics, for this. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, have a great day, evening or night, wherever you are.